how are you today? I am Krista from Plant Lux. It's so good to see you guys again. Sorry I've been like off for a couple weeks getting the plant shop ready and packing and shipping orders. Um, tag me when you get them and show me, you know, what the plants are like in your new home. That would be amazing. Uh, if, you, if you're on IG, please do. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are new here, hi. Um, I'm Krista and we talk about plants here at Plant Lux and uh, today my uh, daughter is going to actually join us in the touring of all of the I would call our collection of trailing plants. We are so excited to be doing this video today because we are in love with our trailing plants. Oh my gosh. She brought hers home and uh, you know she's back from college so we've got lots of plants to show you today. Okay. Uh, so hey, if, if you could do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, leave some comments in the uh, you know comment section below. Tell me what your favorite trailing plants are, you know, and how they're doing, and um, you know just share with the plant community a little bit about your trailing plants. That'd be awesome. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, also, let's see. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, subscribe. Okay, here we go. Go over here real quick. I'm gonna bring this to you. Because I just absolutely love this Hoya Kubla Calyx. Look how pretty this guy is. Let's go back up over here in the light. It's a little dark today, Al. So these two beauties are Hoya Kubla Calyx. And even though they are, you know, different plants, not different plants, the same plant, they look a little uh, different because one has more silver splash than the other, and one's bigger than the other. Look how pretty the leaves are on that guy. Just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So one of the things I've noticed about the longer trailing plants is that you do have to water them more frequently. What do you think, Taylor? Yeah, because they're established. So they run out of water so fast. I, I couldn't keep up with my Skinapsis pictus exotica, so I had to chop it up. We'll so, I'll show you that guys later, which one I'm talking about. All right, um, over here, this is, you remember ta talking to me about this Hoya Crimson Princess? Remember, you said it was so dry and you yeah. had to do something about it? Well, I did. And now look how happy it is. It is so pretty. Look at those legs. So pretty. It is very, very heavy, but it is a gorgeous plant. Now, one of the things about these guys is I noticed that they have a tendency to go back to the Carnosa mode. You know, this is like all Carnosa, this one right here. It's so interesting. Look how pretty these leaves are, though. They are so pretty. Kind of neat. And here's another trailing one over here. This is another Hoya uh, Crimson Princess. This one's just a... Yeah, it's the same, oop, that left leaf. <laughs> it's the same, uh, you know, kind. It just, you know, it's ver the variegation is different. I think this is an exotica, a Hoya Crimson Princess exotica. But it looks very similar to me. Don't you think, Taylor? Yeah. So similar. Uh, so, so maybe this is an exotica. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so yeah, look at this one. This is the Scandapsis. Uh, Pictus exotica. Look at how big this leaf is. It is giant. Love these guys. So let's talk for a second about how how, how long does it take to get my plant like this? Because I want a long trailing one. Well, it does take, let's see, I got this one like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so about two years and I have propagated it a number of times. So in order to have it bush out, um, but every, every once in a while, it'll shoot out a gangly vine, you know, and I'll just snip it and then it'll bush out more. So it does take quite a while, I think, for an exotica to get longer, but yours is quite a bit larger than mine. So I think it just matters, like, you know, it depends on your environment. Like, how much sunlight do you have your uh, plant in and uh, how often are you fertilizing it and how often are you watering it and those sorts of things. So I feel like because you had that giant window, yeah, you know, that, that it was in that maybe yours just grew faster. That's a possibility. Another trailer that I love and I have a bunch of these longer ones with Brazil philodendron. I can never resist one of these, honestly. Every time I see one, I have to get it. It's, it's sort of a, a thing. Look how giant these leaves are though. Well, um, look at that. Yeah, they're big. So this is a Brazil philodendron 
chordatum, I believe. I think the chordatum leaves are bigger. We should mention how a lot of the ones that we have that are so big now started off a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. About yeah. that size, maybe even a little bit bigger. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned it, so yeah. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love that guy. And let's go show him right now the, um, the ones that are giant. And then we'll come back over here. So if you see, like this guy right here, we got this one about a year ago. So this is about the size of this one. Okay, it's another Exotica, Scandapsis Pictus Exotica. But look at the collection up at the uh, catwalk. So we have, starting on this side, we have our Brazil philodendron. It started out just like the one we just showed you. We have this one right here, which is the uh, Cordatum. It's a heart-shaped leaf. It's a philodendron Cordatum. They're all heart-shaped leaves, but uh, right next to it, another Cordatum. And then we have two philodendron micans. You can tell which one is mine because mine looks like a little tiny one compared to hers, you know? Uh, yeah. I've cut mine multiple times though. And then we're gonna go up and I'm actually gonna show you what propagation does because um, when you cut the bottom, it does make it bush out on the top. So hers has the legs, but mine has the bushy top. So. And then uh, again, over here, we have another cordatum and a Brazil philodendron and other cordatum. So between Taylor's collection and mine, I think we've got the vining category pretty much down. Do you want to like hold some of them so they can see? Yeah. Okay, so let's, now that we're up here, okay. So let's do this one down here. This is your biggest one, right? I think so. So her and I have very long leggy leggies. Um, so it took, what, Taylor's, is this one two years old or less than two? Two. Two years old. So if you want one of these babies to get long legs, it takes about two years to get them there. Yeah, it started off probably like... Right about there? So it was already leggy when you got it. Yeah. So if it starts out up here, It'll still be leggy in two years, but maybe not this long. Yeah. It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Love it. It's like one of my favorites. I just love how long it is. I do too. Tell me what, what, uh, what first people said when you were carrying them out of your apartment. Oh, <laughs> uh, they asked if they were fake. Because <laughs> they were so large and they've never seen plants that big before. <laughs> oh, this one's so pretty. Yeah. Oh, look at this guy. Another Brazil. Very bushy on the top, so you must have been clipping leaves on this. I think it's just because it was getting more top down light where it oh, was. Oh, yeah. Pretty patterns on this guy. I have cut it though a couple of times. Yeah, I can tell you had it in the sun because it um, has a little bit of sun bleaching. Yeah. Um, everyone's dying to see the micans. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so come over here real quick. <clears throat> so this one's my micans on the top. So you can kind of see the difference here from the top down. So, you know, I've cut this thing. I can't even count how many times, so many times. Yeah, so that's what happens when you propagate. You do get a lot more bushing, bushing out on the top. I mean, this is still a pretty- It's still long. Pretty long one. This is my biggest micans. And I can't take Taylor's because she would take both of my arms. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I get the privilege of living with this Mikeins. <laughs> so long. Look how long that is. It's crazy. It's so pretty. And you know, I have seen Mikeins at other nurseries, okay? And I will say that this particular micin seems to be more velvety, ours, the ones that we have, is more velvety and more purple than the, some of the other ones I've seen. And I've tried to do research as to why that would be, and I haven't really found any, anything that, that uh, just, I guess it's part of the cultivar of where we got the micins. And we did get those, I believe, a long time ago. What, two years ago two at years. Maryfield? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they started off as three. Three. They were three inch like plugs. They were plugs. Yeah, they were really, really <clears throat> small plugs. Um, okay, this one. Now this. <laughs> this is Taylor's Skinnapsis pictus. Okay. 
Oh, it is, as you can see, quite a prize. Look at this thing. Oh my God. You got that for me for Christmas. I did. I, I did. Yes. Look at that. Now mine was, I would say, pretty close to this length, but come to find out, in my head, I thought, you know, I didn't have to water it as often. But when you have a, a plant with this much length and that little pot, and it's basically taking water really, how often are you watering? As much as possible? Um, Cause normally we, we would tell viewers, you know, hey, don't overwater. I do it, it's like once a week cause I'm not super on top of it, but it probably do better like once every five days. Because I just watered this, so like when the leaves start to curl, yeah. so, like this one's still kind of curled right here. When it looks like that, that's when I water it. Yeah, mine it just didn't. I don't know if I had it in the wrong spot. My other one's still alive, but no. So look at this, this guy's. Oh my goodness, another beautiful Skinapsis Cactus Exotica. So pretty, and another very leggy Mykins. Very beautiful. Okay, those are, I'm just gonna show our favorite ones because we, we would be in a very yeah. long video. So Taylor, <laughs> this, this plant is crazy. So this is a reverting marble queen. It looks like it's coming back a little bit because you must have had it in the sun. Oh, it's beautiful. Very long and leggy. So you guys can, as you know, all the plants that we're showing you today, you can stake them up on a stake or you can let them vine down. If you stake them up on a stake, their leaves will just get very giant. And I'm gonna show you what happens to a philodendron when you stake it when we go back downstairs. Beautiful. So Marble Queen Pothos. Wow, yours is really doing well. Mine doesn't look anything like this. It took a long time for it to start really vining out though. Yeah, this one's a slower grower. I don't know why, but so this is more like a snow queen, I would say, pothos. Yeah. Meet right, you. Yeah. Um, because the marble queen pothos, it has a has I would say like more green marbling, and this has more white marbling, more white variegation. Yeah, very pretty. Love it. It's gorgeous. Another skin has picked this. This looks more like mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so those are some of our favorite ones, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the beauty, very beautiful uh, Hoya Crimson Queen. That is one of my absolute favorite plants. Uh, the only thing I have to say about Hoya is when you have a long, long woman like this and it gets very root bound, you have to soak the, uh, the pot in water, but the, the roots in water, in order to water it thoroughly enough to uh, prevent leaf death. That's so pretty, Taylor. It really is gorgeous. And mine is uh, downstairs, hanging out. We'll, we'll, I'll show you guys mine too. It's so pretty. Do you want to lift this one up? Because it's not Oh normally. yeah, this is so unique. I love this pot, by the way. So, <laughs> you guys are for probably, if those of you who've watched my videos in the past know about the, um, the uh, red emerald philodendron. So that's what this is, and this is Taylor's. And it has really gotten bushy and big, and we are going to do a video and stake this one up so that she has it on a stake so that she can eventually have her own eight foot wonder like I have downstairs. These are so easy to grow. Uh, I do sell them on the website. Oh, by the way, we are gonna have a Christmas in July sale and the red emeralds are gonna be one of the ones that are sort of like on a super special um, super sale. So kind of be on the lookout for that. Um, I haven't sent an email yet, but I'm going to. So. Probably gonna be like 50% off. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love this Taylor. All right. I always feel like I'm doing a shameless plug whenever I talk about mm -hmm. what's on sale. Oh, I love these, these are so pretty. So the Cebu Boo Epipremnum is hanging on. I mean, it started as a tiny one. These are fast growers, but I think this has been propagated multiple times, so. That would explain why it's still small. What else do we want to talk about? Um, what's going on here? So, 
Okay, so technically this is, it is staked, okay, but this is a vining plant and this is one of my prolific growers. Obviously I haven't propagated this in a while. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I liked how it was waterfalling. It looked very plumy and I just was enjoying it being a trailing plant. And Taylor, you told me that yours kind of kind of went bye-bye. Not my wide one, not Oh, my your wide one. I was going to say, because look, just chop these off, put them in water, and bam. <laughs> right? So I can make a long vining plant out of just this part right here if I wanted to. <laughs> so this is a Polonia pulchra, Polynesian ivy. And you can, you can see how interesting and weird the texture is. It even feels strange. I hope the camera can do it justice. Um, it's very unique and interesting. Let me hit my smisio. I have, I usually have a, a string of um, dolphins in here, or a string of bananas in here. Um, I gotta get it. I had to water it though. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So yeah. So so this is a Polonia uh, pulchra. I absolutely love the coloration of the leaves. It's super easy to grow. It took me about two years to get mine this large, and I I have propagated it. A number of times but again um, to get a big one like this you have to make sure that you are fertilizing on the regular making sure that this is not a plant that likes the direct sunlight so I keep it pulled back away from the window it just keeps shooting out these awesome watermelon looking like textured leaves I love it get a close-up of that that is just to me the most interesting weird it's very succulent like so this plant does retain a lot of moisture, so it's so easy to care for because if you miss a watering, it's very forgiving. Yeah, it's so neat, isn't that neat? Yeah. Okay. I usually have it hanging out in this pot here. This is my string of bananas. Yeah, it's it's a long guy. It's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's very textured and it's just different. I'm surprised you're able to keep that plant alive. <laughs> I killed I, mine the first year. <laughs> you know, it's hit or miss, right? I noticed that it does seem to, even though it's a succulent, it dries out. So I have to make sure I'm watering it. And sometimes I miss it because I, I don't know, because it's a, it's a succulent. So I'm like, oh, water that later. And then you do it a couple of times and then it's like, oh, I guess later is too late. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should probably bring that back over. Just don't forget this part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, guys, this is... <laughs> this is my... My giant... Uh, <laughs> Philodendron Brazil. Can you believe how long this is feeling? It's crazy. So, this is kind of like your... Your... Um, Scandapsis pictus, how long it is. Yeah. But, yeah, this is one of my favorite mining plants. It is just so cool. I was just growing because it's right in the window. Probably. Yeah, but I haven't always had it here. I have it in my bedroom, kind of in a shaded area for a while. I've moved it around the whole house, I think, uh, quite a bit. Kind of nice. It's so neat. Look how big these are. I don't know how I got so lucky. I just feel very lucky and blessed to have that plant. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do have to water it very, very regularly. Okay. Ooh, I love that. That looks so good there. Wow. Don't you think that's stunning? Yeah. I just love that thing. Oh, it's so pretty. It's purple. Purple, red, I don't know, deep green. I haven't quite nailed the care for that one yet. I think I keep overwatering mine. Oh, you do? I think. Look at Whiskey. Are you joining us, baby pussies? Yes, you are. You love us. You do. You love us. Come on. All right, yeah. downstairs now? Yeah. All right, we're gonna go in the front room. Let's talk about, my, this is my favorite viners. So this is my Crimson Queen. I did cut the legs a little shorter on her. I was hoping maybe it would encourage adventitious growth, but also I'm trying to get it to flower. I wanna see a peduncle on this guy. You know, so <laughs> I'm just trying everything. <laughs> and then we have, this string of hearts that, ooh, it looks like it needs repotting. Oh, there's roots coming out the bottom. There's a lot of humidity near that window. So, you know, this beauty here 
coming closer. I'm gonna show these guys this. Look at these nodes. <laughs> Look how giant these nodes are. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> They're huge. You just cut that and stick that in soil and it'll grow a new plant. You don't have to have a node like that though. You can have a teeny tiny one like one of these guys. They're everywhere. They're so small. But yeah, really cool. <sighs> I love it. So it's because our plants are taking up all the light. So guys, this is my Hoya Bella. Look at how pretty this is. And Taylor, you have chopped it quite a bit too for the plant chop. Oh yeah. Um, but look at all these legs. Two years, right? Yeah. Two years. Um, it's really when we started buying a lot of plants, I guess, is at the height of COVID. Yeah. Uh, this is a peduncular. Peduncular. It gets so many peduncles. Right now, there's only a few on it, but there's one right there. But um, it, it, are, it already shot out, I would say, probably about 25 peduncles, maybe it's not more. not focusing. It's not focusing? No, but I think they can kind of see it. Oh, here's like one right here. Focus. Whatever, that's good enough. <laughs> and then my string of turtles, Peperomia frustrata. It's flowering. It's really pretty. And I love this plant. It does take a while for it to grow. This one's, um, I think, about two years old also. It's between two and three, or maybe one. One to three is fair. Yeah. Um, this this is a, a plant that does grow kind of slow. Um, <laughs> really whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> You're making so much noise, you crazy dog. <laughs> anyway. This is another one of my favorites, but it does, again, take a while for it to, for if you're gonna propagate, to get a plant this size. I would say it probably takes two to three years, maybe. Yeah. So let's show them the Rio, because this is also another favorite. It's a philodendron Rio, but, you know, those of you who are familiar with Gabby plants, they're the ones that, you know, basically cultivated it over the last several decades. And uh, there are other uh, anomalies or rare mutations uh, that usually occur within the, the family of this philodendron, philodendron heteraceum. And, um, you know, so sometimes you'll get cream splash, sometimes you'll get silver stripes, sometimes you'll get Rio. Uh, but they did cultivate, they're the ones that invented the, the, the I guess you could say, the breed, <laughs> the cultivar. So anyway, check out the, do a close up and we'll talk about the leaves. So this one has like some sport variegation on it. You know, it's mainly you know, uh, like cream color and, and really light green. Um, this one is straight cream and silver. And you've got this leaf, which is, this one at the top here is your traditional Rio leaf. It has the cream stripe, the white, like the cream white stripe, and then the light green in the center. And it's flanked with, you know, a silver stripe of some kind. But this is your traditional Rio reef and what it would, leaf, reef, <laughs> Rio leaf and what it would look like. But as you know, the anomalies or the rare mutations show themselves in the same plant. So you could get a rare silver, or excuse me, a rare cream splash leaf where you have half of it, you know, cream or all cream. Um, you know, it just depends. So this one here is a good example. Well, this one actually still has the silver stripe on it, but that's cream and a silver stripe. And let's see. Whiskey, why you gotta be so lazy? Actually, this is pretty consistent with your plant. Okay. Mine's the one that has a lot of the rare mutations. This one's an example, though, of one that doesn't have a silver stripe, even though it's part of the Rio plant. It has a very, probably very fine stripe, but, you know, you've got your cream, your light green, and your darker green, and you've got your trademark, you know, sort of down the center striping. But, yeah, so you can see the difference if you do a side-by-side of like this leaf, for example, and that leaf. It's kind of interesting. I should just do a video on that. Mm -hmm. We just spent a lot of time talking about <laughs> that. All right, let's put this guy away. So guys, thank you for joining us today on our tour of our uh, favorite vining plants. Um, you know, we really enjoy having, you know, you guys come back and support us on our channel. Whiskey does too. He's always willing to make an appearance. And uh, you know, we, we appreciate your support here on YouTube. Check out plantlux.com if you haven't done so already. We will be having a Christmas in July sale to 12 days of plants. So check it out. It'll start uh, July 25th. 
Okay? Thank you so much, guys. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs> You're nuts. I love you. You're so crazy. Why are you so crazy? <laughs> You're crazy. You're nuts, baby. Oh, you're a crazy nut job. Look at you. He's Look like, okay, you. 38 minutes is enough. Time to be excited. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs>